Okay, in this video, we're going to cover the specs of the Samsung Galaxy Nexus phone for Verizon Wireless. Now, this is the 4G LTE version here in the United States. There is a 3G version of this phone that was released outside of the United States. So the first thing we're going to go over is just what you get when you get the phone here. So this is a fairly large cell phone. It measures 135.5 millimeters in height or 5.33 inches. It measures 67.94 millimeters in width or 2.675 inches. And the depth of this device, this one is the LTE version, so it's actually a little bit thicker than the 3G version. It measures 9.47 millimeters in thickness and that translates into 0.373 inches. If this was just the 3G version of the phone, it would be 8.94 millimeters in thickness, and that would translate into 0.352 inches. So about half a millimeter, a little over half a millimeter thicker than the 3G version of this phone. Now, originally I thought there was Gorilla Glass on this phone, but apparently I can't dig up anything on that, so I'm going to assume it does not have Gorilla Glass on the phone. You have a front-facing camera on the device here, and that's a 1.3 megapixel camera. Right here you have your earpiece, and pretty much that's it on the front of the screen here. There are no buttons. Everything is software related on this phone. This is Android Ice Cream Sandwich, Android 4.0, and they did away with all of the buttons, which I kind of like. On the right side of the phone, you'll notice that there's a three-pin connector here, and that's for when you put this device into a dock and that way the phone knows it's in a dock. You also have your power button here on the right side of the device. On the left side of the device, you have your volume rocker, and that's pretty much it. Now you'll notice on this is that there's a slight curve. It's a little bit concave here, this, uh, the, the screen here. So there's an actual curved glass front to it, and it kind of hugs your face when you hold this up to your face. Not too much, but it, it kind of contours to your face. On the top of the device, there is nothing up here. And on the bottom of the device is where you have your connectors. You have your micro USB port here, your microphone here, and your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack here. Now on the back of the device, you have your five megapixel camera and your LED flash. And down here you have a speaker for speakerphone. And also up here is the second mic. There's a very small pinhole up there. Now this phone offers NFC, so that's near field communication, so that allows you to communicate with other devices just by touching it to this phone. One of the things that uses NFC is Google Wallet. Unfortunately, this version of the phone, Google Wallet has been disabled. So you cannot use this device unless you root it and hack it. You cannot use this device to make payments with. And if you're not familiar with what Google Wallet does, it's actually an NFC payment method. So you can actually pay for things with this phone instead of using a credit card. All you would need to do is swipe this phone or bump this phone on any kiosk or any payment device that allows NFC payments to be made on it. And you wouldn't need a credit card or anything. Unfortunately, that has been disabled on this device at least Google Wallet. The NFC has not been disabled. In fact, the NFC is in the battery, and I'll show you that here right now. I'm just going to open the back here. And when you open the back of this, you pull this piece of plastic off. And this has a, uh, a texture to it right there, if you can see it there. And also you can probably see the Verizon 4G branding and also the Samsung branding there. But that's the back piece, and this is the battery here. But if you look on the battery itself here, it says, let's see if we can get that in focus, it says near field communication, and that's what NFC stands for. So the near field communication chip is built into the battery here. Now above the battery here is your SIM card slot. Now this device only takes micro SIMs, which is one of the few phones that actually does take a micro SIM. Now normally on Verizon Wireless, if you're outside the United States or just basically don't know, Verizon Wireless is a CDMA network, so you do not use SIM cards on it. You just basically attach the phone to your account. 
Well, with 4G LTE, they're starting to use SIM cards, so that's what that is right there. So let's put this back on here, snap it back on. Now, as you can tell, the back is a plastic and the entire device is made out of a plastic and it's a, a gray, a dark gray. Now, one of the main features, the distinctive features on this phone is the display. And really, seeing it on my videos doesn't really do it justice. Seeing it in person, you really see the vibrant colors on this device. And it actually, the device screen is fairly large. It measures 4.65 inches diagonally. And it's an HD Super AMOLED Pentile display. Now, some people have issue with the Pentile display. I don't have any issue at all with the Pentile display. I think this display is gorgeous. The blacks are very dark and the colors are very vibrant. The pixel density on the device is very high. It's 316 pixels per inch, which is really impressive for such a large screen. In comparison, the Apple iPhone 4S has a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. So you have 10 more pixels per inch on the Apple iPhone 4S, but the Apple iPhone 4S has a much smaller screen. It's a 3.5 inch screen on that device. Now this phone actually has a 720p resolution screen. That means you have 1280 pixels this way and 720 pixels this way. So in comparison, this screen on this phone is the same resolution as some television sets. It's a very high resolution. And like a television set, you actually get the 16 by 9 aspect ratio on it. The phone displays 16 million colors and you have a 100,000 to 1 contrast ratio. Now this phone is $299.99 on contract. If you want to buy it off contract, it's $799.99. Now I know there's a lot of technology in this device, but $800 for a cell phone if you're buying it off of contract is very steep. And really I think that the carriers do that to force you into a contract because I'm really not sure that this device is going to cost more than an actual tablet which might have the same LTE capabilities as this device. On a side note, I remember buying my Nexus One, the original Nexus phone, straight from Google and it was $529, which I found to be a reasonable price. Anything above $600 is pretty much unreasonable territory. Now the phone weighs 135 grams or 4.8 ounces. And as I said before, it runs the latest version of Android, which is Android Ice Cream Sandwich, Android 4.0. Now the CPU on this phone is a 1.2 gigahertz Texas Instruments OMAP 4460 ARM Cortex A9 dual core processor. And the phone also has a GPU, which is a 384 megahertz Power VR SGX540 processor. The phone has one gigabyte of RAM, and the internal storage on this device is 32 gigabytes, and it's non-upgradable, so there are no SD card slots or micro SD card slots on this phone. Now, as is standard, the screen on this device is a multi-touch capacitive screen. It has your typical accelerometer, gyroscope, which is a three-axis gyroscope, assisted GPS, digital compass, proximity sensor, and as I showed you, the dual microphones for active noise cancellation. And this device also has a barometer on it, and I believe it was the Motorola Zoom tablet that also has a barometer in it, but unfortunately I never saw anybody take advantage of that, make use of it, there were no apps or anything that used it. Hopefully somebody does take advantage of that. Now if you're interested in putting your media on this device, for audio you can use MP3s, waves. EAAC+, AC3, Vorbis, and FLAC media formats. Also, for video, you can use MP4, H.264, H.263, and WebM. And it accepts MP3s and WAV audio file formats for ringtones and notifications. Now, the connectivity on this device, you actually have GPS on it. You have Bluetooth version 3.0 plus HS. You have A2DP, DLNA, the port on the bottom is a micro USB 2.0 port. You have MHL, 
NFC as we covered. And the Wi-Fi on the device is 802.11 A, B, G, and N at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. The phone is capable of being a Wi-Fi hotspot and capable of USB tethering. And the display has an oleophobic coating on it which supposedly repels oil from your fingertips. And for the hearing impaired, it is M4 compatible. So those are the specs on Google's new flagship phone, the Samsung Galaxy Nexus phone, and in my case, for Verizon Wireless. So that pretty much does it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.